Our next speaker is really, really cool. I, I mean, this is just a great story. Uh, as you guys know, I tend to get involved in issues sometimes very public and well-known and sometimes very obscure. Usually always, though, it has a anti-government component for some reason. I don't know why. Uh, but there's an issue in Congress right now where you have what we, we see quite a lot is special interest in the swamp pushing special interest legislation to protect big business. And in a lot of ways, big business is as bad as, if not worse, than big government. Um, and so what we have is a special interest, uh, the optometrist, who are pushing legislation that would restrict your ability to purchase contact lenses online, and it also involves emerging telemedicine. Now, I met this gentleman who's going to come up in a minute, Kerry Samarkasian. Did I get it right? Ah, he's Armenian, and I'm not real good with Armenian, but I'm getting better. Uh, I met Kerry. Come on up, Kerry. We'll have a seat. And we're going to have a little bit of a conversation about this. But uh, Kerry owns Lens.com and lives here in Las Vegas. I did not know that. Yeah. He's one of us. Um, let me get you a microphone. Go ahead. Uh, and someone put me in touch with Kerry and said, you, uh, Chuck, you and Kerry should get together. I think you guys would really hit it off and like each other. Well, first of all, he's an entrepreneur, so yeah, we, that, that was pretty much a given uh, going in. Uh, we went to McCormick and Schmicks, I think, right? Yes. Uh, for lunch. Uh, he's a busy man. I figured, okay, we'll have lunch for an hour. We'll see how things go and, you know, have to help him, all, help him with, with his issue. Uh, what was it 7 o'clock? Rolled around. <laughs> we went from lunch right to the bar and just sat and, and we just, he's just really a fantastic guy, great story, and we hit it off and uh, we were sober when we did. We, we were drinking soda water, right? Yes. Yes, that's our story and we're sticking to it. Yeah. Uh, but we, we did. We, we had a great time, a great discussion. He's a terrific uh, person. And so tell us a little bit about your background and did you lose a bet and have to come to Las Vegas in the middle of the summer? Or no, what? no. Go ahead. I, um, I actually started. I think they put it up close to your mouth like an ice cream cone. Hello? There you go. Okay. So uh, I started Lens.com about 22 years ago here in Vegas. All the way up. Right to your mouth. Just okay. That's it. Like oh, an ice cream right. cone. Okay. There you go. So uh, I started uh, Lens.com about 22 years ago here in Vegas. And uh, back then, there was 32 attorney generals suing the uh, four contact lens manufacturers. And uh, the Optometric Association for collusion on preventing consumers to buy contact lenses uh, elsewhere. So there's two medical professions that sell what they prescribe, and the first one is the veterinarians. So they, they prescribe it, and then they sell it to you right in the office, and the second one is the optometrist. They write a prescription for contact lenses, and at the same time, they go ahead and sell it to you right in the office. Uh, one complicated issue with contact lenses is that the prescription requires the brand on there and there's never a generic. So in order for the contact lens manufacturers to get market share, they have to um, provide special uh, favors to the optometric association uh, to get market share, unspoken. So uh, that's where we come in. So, so we're, we're a discounter. We sell it for less than Costco does. Uh, you can buy it online. Uh, we also sell eyeglasses on a separate site. Uh, we started that about three years ago. And we have the same complication in that industry, where a piece of plastic that's made in China usually for $3 uh, ends up being sold in the optometry office for two dollars $300. And if you're lucky. And uh, I went to China this, uh, twice so far, and the wholesale costs are under $10. So there's no reason for a $10 piece of plastic to cost as much as a smartphone does. So no electronics, nothing fancy about it. It's been around for you know 100 years, right? Close to whatever, but uh, we're overpaying for it. And it's because we have this collusion going on where uh, the optometrists are trying to lobby on the local level on laws where they protect their interest, where 
companies like mine can't provide discount products to our fellow Americans. Uh, we need choice, we need lower prices, and there's no reason for a product to be marked up that high for the consumer. So uh, it's been a 22-year battle. I thought that uh, the, the initial lawsuit that I talked about about the attorney generals was gonna be over and it would be a wide open road for me to enter. I saw that opportunity. But unfortunately, 22 years later, it's just as bad, if, if not worse, because uh, the war's gotten even more aggressive. Uh, so they're making too much money and they're putting it right back into it to protect their interests pretty much. So uh, we've had contact lens manufacturers come up with novel ideas like uh, map pricing. That's what uh, Apple does with their phone so that you, can't, you, you have to buy it at the same price no matter where you go. And in order for us to maintain our account with the manufacturers, we have to sell it at the same price that they dictate. So we battled that war, and it was a very long one, and, and Chuck was instrumental in that uh, battle. Uh, we finally made them go away, but they were very aggressive on 13 or 14 states. Uh, now they left that alone. Now they're tackling a different issue, and this is an exciting issue, which uh, I'm sure you guys are gonna have a lot of questions. So itest.com, you could take an eye test online with your smartphone and desktop. It's part of telemedicine. You don't have to go to the eye doctor anymore. So this is the Uber of contact lenses or the optical industry. So now I found out there, there is an exception to the rule, though, because I, I tried to do it. I wanted to see if it, it worked, and, uh, and I was too old. Um, so there, I mean, there are safeguards put into place unless you lie about your age. I think it's 50. You have to be on 50 or less in order to use the... I, I think that uh, initially we're, we're starting off with a limited scope. And I think that with everything, uh, you, you kind of gradually kind of test and expand of the parameters. But currently we're very limited on... It has to be for somebody that... So for a renewal prescription is where we're starting now. And then eventually it'll start getting into widening the age range and getting into more multifocals and more complicated prescriptions. But the good news is that the technology is here and it's only gonna get better. And now we have these optometric association where their whole trade is questionable and they're putting everything they have behind us and everything else. So uh, Chuck's been helping on that front. Uh, so one, one of the things that they battled, right, is they said that telemedicine is okay, because this is part of telemedicine. But interestingly, they don't agree with, a, with telemedicine rendering a prescription, because a prescription is where they make their profit in the store. So they don't want that to be an issue. So we had the MDs. So there's optometrists and ophthalmologists. Ophthalmologists are MDs that go to school for eight years. Uh, ODs are uh, not doctors, but they're called doctors, but they go to school for four years. And they're primarily found in optical shops doing eye exams. And uh, so we utilize MDs to do the uh, review the refraction. Uh, so we think that it's a better quality review of the refraction. And there's been uh, studies, uh, not studies, but there was a, it was a TV show, it was not 2020, but one of them, that they, uh, they took their uh, staff from the office because people want to know if this, if this is accurate. So they took their staff, I think it was four or 10, I think they sent it to four doctors. And uh, the prescriptions were within, you know, up and down a little bit because you're never gonna get the same prescription go into four doctors. It's always gonna be a little bit different. It's not exactly A or B, it's you know, in between somewhere. So they went to the four doctors and there was variance in both of them, uh, all four of them. And then when they went to take the test online, uh, it came within the same range. So it was very accurate compared to all the four other ones. So it was up and down, you know, a fraction of a percent. So, uh, it is a good tool, it works, it's FDA approved, and, uh, but we're getting this battle where they're going in on the state level trying to oppose bills uh, saying that telemedicine is okay but not when it comes to rendering prescriptions because they want to 
charge more in their offices. So uh, that's. Yeah, yeah just like I say, if, if, if you have contacts or glasses, you, you know about this. If you don't, you know, it may be a little bit confusing. But basically, optometrists, other than veterinarians, because they don't treat people, although some of their patients are better than some of the people that I know, they're the only, quote, doctor who is allowed to issue a prescription and then sell you the product to fill the prescription right there in their own office. So clearly, they don't want to give you a prescription that you can then use online or take to Costco or a discount store. They want you to spend your money right there in the optometrist's office. Uh, and, and so there was a law passed that said you have to provide a prescription to the patients. It's not optional. You must provide it. Now, that, that, was, was, that was 10 years ago, and we have proof after proof showing that they don't give the prescription to their patients. So when the 10-year review came on the bill, we, uh, we brought it up to the FTC. So now uh, it's up for a vote. I'm not sure where it is, but uh, we're asking that the patient sign a document saying that they received a prescription because they're not giving it. And I think that part of it is that patients don't know that prescription belongs to them when they pay for their eye exam. So that's part of the reason we're, we're passing this, because we want the doctors to get a signature from the patient saying that I received a prescription. That will open up the gates for consumers having choice, being able to go out and buy it at lower prices. Before we opened up this conversation, how many people in here knew that the optometrist was required to give you a prescription? Sure. It's all the people, okay, so you knew, okay. Um, and like I said, a lot of people don't know that that's the law, that they're required to give you the prescription. And when they do, um, sometimes, I mean, when you go and sometimes they, they just don't. Uh, and, and that's a problem and that's what we're fighting right now. The optometrists are saying this is an undue burden. How many have ever had to go in to pick up a prescription and had to sign a paper acknowledging that you know, you've met with a doctor or they've told you what the possible side effects were? Is anybody? Yeah. No, nobody else has to? No, no, this is national. Oh, this is, this is nationwide, yeah. Yeah, but in Nevada, there was a bill this past session that uh, shamefully a Republican introduced, Jill Tolis, that would have essentially banned telemedicine, that in Nevada you would not be able to go online and take the eye test and then order your uh, eye eyeglasses on. And fortunately, the bill was killed. No, go, go ahead. That's, that's okay. Sure. Um, well, well, actually, they're not. They're, they're separate prescriptions, but the, the problem is that when it comes to eyeglasses, uh, everybody knows that you could get the prescription because uh, it's, it's been a long time. But when it came to contact lenses, uh, they're kind of changing it a little bit, right? Because they want to make more money. I'll tell you why it, it's, it's a little bit complicated. When you, when you want to get eyeglasses, you go to the optical shop, they usually have 300 glasses on the wall frames and they may not be your style. So you have a, you could say, oh, I don't like what you have here. I'm gonna shop around for a better or a different design. I want a different brand. And you know, you have a way out to get your prescription. So it's become more popular or more mainstream for people to know that you can just grab that prescription. But when you go to the eye doctor for contact lenses, it's the same product. So you don't, it, it, it's a commodity. So, and they say, oh, well, we sell it here. Why are you gonna buy it somewhere else? And we even hear uh, from fellow eye doctors that I have friends where their friends kind of mark the patient's name with an X next to it, kind of indicating they didn't buy the contact lenses from us so they could you know, have an additional conversation later on. Uh, so that's the, that's the difference. They are two separate prescriptions, but they're treated a little bit differently, but they're both, Sometimes you don't get your eyeglass prescriptions also. We have that same problem. For the eyeglass prescription to buy online, you need a PD. And they won't give you the PD because they say that that's not part of the prescription. PD is a pupillary distance. It's between your two pupils, and you need that to get the center of the eyeglasses. Okay. Yes, sir. So, should they know not to bother, which is what I always do. Correct. Do you have any liability for that? So, so, what we're doing is this is telemedicine, and I'll tell you how this works. So, we do the refraction online, and then the refraction results go to an MD, ophthalmologist, the same person you go to, 
within your same state to review it. So it's, we're not making any shortcuts. There's no liability. There's a patient-doctor relationship in there. No, it's never done. I've appraised a lot of uh, hospitals, but the Senate decided to set up an markup on glasses that is so horrendous that it drives me crazy to go buy a new set of glasses at a Bangladesh or wherever. They want 150 for them, and they pay three cents for them. Does the markup get terrible? Uh, some of them force us. The markup from, from the manufacturer of glasses. So, for eyeglasses, only 3% is sold online, and the rest of it is all sold in brick and mortar. And the manufacturers, to, to open an account, they give you map pricing, usually. Map pricing means that you have to sell at a price they dictate. You can't go below that. So it, it, it's, it, it's a racket. Yeah. How, how is that legal? That, I thought that would it's, be anti-competitive, that there were laws to prevent it's from a, it's price the same, fixing. It's the same way Apple uh, dictates you, you, you're going to buy it at the same, uh, same price everywhere. I think it got changed uh, about in the recent past. So it used to be that they couldn't dictate that, but now they can. Hmm. Okay. It really is. Yes. They did that with contact lenses also, and we had to battle them out. Elizabeth? We'll, we'll get it. Don't worry. Oh no! Yeah, no, no. You could, you could. Yeah. So there's. So we're talking about three separate things. Just to clarify. So we're talking about contact lenses, where there's uh, one issue. We're talking about eyeglasses, where there's a different issue. Now we're talking about eye exam or eye test. It's a third issue. So uh, for the contact lenses, uh, there's, it's a commodity, so you can't price shop, so they rarely give you the prescription. So we're trying to make that open up so everybody could get their hands there on their prescription so they could shop around for uh, discounts. I mean, we, we sell it for below, one, uh, below uh, Costco's price, uh, so it's, it's, it's very low, very thin margins. Well, the, the law was passed 10 years ago that requires them to give it, right, without you asking. Without you asking, they're supposed to give it, but they never do. They do one of these, they kind of put, the, put it in your hand, try, try, try to, and then they, you never grab it, and they uh. go, okay, and the receptionist or somebody at the front desk is going to fill it for you. So if we request it, they must give it. They must, or, or else there's an $11,500 fine, but they take that risk. Okay. So while we're, they, sorry, just to kind of, continue with that one. So what we're doing now is we're, the 10 year review came up, so we're asking them where the FTC's actually came up with their, their we didn't ask, we, we kind of brought up the issue. So the FTC recommended that what the eye doctor should do is, is get a signature from the patient saying that they got it, every patient. So now you just don't have to ask for it. They have to give it to you. They say, here's your prescription, you have to sign here. Before, they were, we were giving them the benefit of doubt that they were honorable, they were going to give it, then they were not giving it. Their pocketbook was dictating their actions. Didi? Okay. So I am a contact lens user, and I did ask the ophthalmologist to give me the prescription, which they didn't want to do. I insisted, and I walked out of there. So I get my lenses at Costco. But when I went to get the annual pair, well, they said, well, your prescription is no longer valid, and you have to go for Oh yeah, there's, there's differences between contact lenses, right? And there's no generics for them. So uh, I'm glad that you demanded your prescription. It's your right. Uh, and uh, next time, try us. You, you'll like it. Uh, <laughs> oh, uh, and, and what was that uh, uh, domain and name? What was the website oh, it's, address? It's, it's lens.com, four lens. letters. Lens.com. <laughs> Excuse me? L-E-N-S.com. -L All the way in the back. Sorry. I, I didn't hear that. Sorry. 
Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, to tell you what, what kind of a great dad I am, I didn't even know my son wore contact lenses until he came up to you last night at dinner and asked you if he could get the kind with, with the Halloween Google ones. eyes or something like that. I said, <laughs> you wear contacts? He said, yeah, Dad, when we play soccer. I said, oh, okay, I didn't even know I had glasses. So, uh, Lynn? Um, you're from Las Vegas, yes? Yes. Um, have you ever considered joining the real Chamber of Commerce? Yeah, I'm going to be there. I could consider it, yes. Yeah. Why not? <laughs> Snake? Yeah, so what, what, what they're doing is they're, uh, I, I don't want to allude to them doing something illegal, but uh, we followed the law, and I feel that they're kind of breaking the law the way they're doing it, um, and then maybe changing it later, I'm not really sure, but uh, what, what they've done is they went, to, they went to Taiwan and found a very old contact lens that's been on the market for a long time, and they brought it to the U.S., gave it a new name, and they're doing a subscription model. So uh, like the lady earlier that asked about quality, uh, the reason that you want to buy brand name contact lenses, uh, but you want to shop around for the best price. So this lens is not really uh, the greatest out there. There's much better lenses. I mean, I want to say it's been out for 10 or more years, and the latest technology is softer. So I don't really see them really getting anywhere unless they come up with better technology. Uh, but we could duplicate that business model tomorrow. But I'm a strong believer that Americans like brands and choices, and that's what we sell. We're not going to sell one product just because we're able to get it for the cheapest price. May or may not be good quality. So we go for the best quality and try to sell it for the lowest price. Okay. And Bonnie? So uh, you do eyeglasses? glasses? Yeah, we do eyeglasses. Oh, okay. So for the eyeglasses, we acquired this site about three years ago. It's Best Buy, like the electronics store, followed by eyeglasses. So Best Buy eyeglasses. We have about, I think, close to 1,100 brands on there. Everything from uh, Gucci to Armani to Reebok to Adidas, you name it. Um, and uh, we're integrated with the second largest uh, eyeglass lab in the world that does about 80,000 eyeglasses a day, and they do 5,000 for Walmart a day. So uh, we're, we're tied in with them where uh, you're going to get the best lenses for your eyeglasses, and the, the frames are going to be at the lowest possible price. Some of them are going to be higher because we're mandated to do that, but there's, we always have coupons site-wide, so we can't discount the price, but we can have discounts on the site. So, what's the best brand name for contact so I'm not a doctor, so I can't recommend, unfortunately, but for everybody, it's different. Uh, so it depends if you have dry eyes, if you have stigmatism, if you have, uh, you know, uh, if you have close range vision for bifocals, so I, there's not one lens that's the best, it's what's best for you. So you have to, you know, you have to get an eye doctor to kind of help you through that process. Uh, there's, four, there's four manufacturers. There's Johnson & Johnson, uh, Alcon, uh, Cooper Vision, and Bao Shalom. Those are the four major contact lens manufacturers and they all have very good contact lenses. Um, I think, is that, is that a Gasprim lens? Is that a hard lens? Oh. I'm, I'm not familiar with that one. It's usually cheaper than Costco, yes. Okay. All right. Any more? <laughs> one more. All right, one more. What I found 
telling me to win, you know, one way or the other. And or the glass, and you know, he kind of had a convenience thing. To he, because he's a real doctor. He's an MD, exactly. right? So we're talking about the ODs. That's you know, so yeah. the MDs. There's about eight thousand of them in the U.S. They're medical doctors. They're the ones that do surgery, cataract. Uh, I, I have a friend of mine whose wife is an ophthalmologist, and sometimes she has to go get surgeries done. And just the other day, I heard that she had to take a nail that was in somebody's eye. So that's the type of construction, uh, somebody that was in construction. So that's the type of work an ophthalmologist does. And I hate to say, but I think selling contact lenses is below them in profits. So they just, you know, they want to give you so you can buy from the lowest price. But unfortunately, the 40,000 ODs that are four years of college and they could work in, you know, in lens crafters and small mom and pop optical shops, those are the ones that make 70% of their income from product sales. So this is about their income and the 70% that they're gouging the U.S. consumer, they should be charging for their services, not for the product they're selling, right? They went to school to be an OD, charge for your services, not for product sales. Okay, great. Now, in your programs toward the back, it, it, um, I can't remember offhand, it's, it's a con Coalition for Consumer Choice and Contacts. Is that the coalition I belong yeah. to? I, I think keep, it's keep Contact Lens Choice, I think. Yeah, I think it's in, in your programs toward the back there, and if you're interested in this issue, please go sign up and join it. You know, I'm already in it, and a lot of other conservative organizations. And actually, this issue isn't a conservative issue. I mean, we've, it really isn't. We've it got is. conservatives and liberals. It's more of a, just a consumer issue. Right. Uh, it's, it's more that the, uh, the optometry group is lobbying on the local level to kind of change these laws where they are anti-consumer uh, where we're trying to help the consumers save money and convenience. I mean, the, the, the itest.com, uh, think about how much savings that's going to bring in outside of the savings of the actual cost. I mean, you have to take off of work, you know, you have to go there, wait around, They're, they make you wait in the waiting room for, you know, if you're lucky half an hour, then you got to drive back. So you're wasting a day or half a day where now you can just do this at night, any time of the day you want, within 48 hours, and MD's gonna look at it, and they're gonna say yes or no. So, and then in the near future, we're coming up with a 10 minute version, so we're very excited about that one. All right, great. Uh, Carrie, thank you so much. Um, thank you. Yep. I'm sorry we didn't have cocktails this time, but <clears throat> we'll, we'll, we'll do that again in, in, in the future. And it's great to have you in Las Vegas, and thank you very much for Thanks, your time. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.